So just a little bit about uh, myself. So as Warren mentioned, I recently graduated from AMC last year. Um, and this work that uh, presenting tonight is part of my undergraduate thesis. Uh, this work uh, was done under the supervision of Associate Professor Gregor McFarlane. And my chosen thesis topic was hull resistance, components, running trim, and wetted surface area effects at the transcritical depth through number speed range. There we go. So as a vessel passes through the waterway, obviously we experience a wave wake pattern, which is similar to the image you can see on the right there. This wave wake pattern is made up of two waves, primarily diverging waves and transverse waves. Uh, this wake pattern is of interest as it can have some adverse effects on the environment, on other water users, and also on the vessel itself in terms of power and resistance. So therefore we chose to investigate the hull resistance components, running trim angle, and the change observed in dynamic wetted values uh, that have to do with this wave wake pattern. We also then did a comparison to deep water data with our primary interest in the transcritical uh, through depth zone. So I'll just give a little bit of background on just a few things that uh, we've spoken about throughout uh, this rest of this presentation. Um, as I mentioned in the last slide, two primarily wave types, diverging and transverse. We also use the fruit length number and fruit depth number to uh, help to non-dimensionalize all the data recorded. In the image on the bottom there, you can see the fruit depth speed zones uh, that we did our testing across. Um, you've got the subcritical, transcritical, critical and supercritical. And you can see that there's a change in the wave wake pattern across those four um, speed zones. For this research, the main area of interest though was however in that transcritical zone from 0 0.75 to one. I'll also just touch on briefly the resistance coefficients. Uh, we've got obviously total resistance, which is CT, which is what is primarily recorded in model scale experiments. And that can be made up of its components of frictional resistance and residuary resistance. Within the residuary resistance, the main component that we're interested in was the wave making, which makes up the primary amount of that resistance. So the testing was completed, obviously, at the Australian Maritime College last year. Uh, we used the model test basin um, to complete the testing. The model test basin is 35 metres long, 12 metres wide, allows for a range of different uh, water depths to be used. Uh, the reason that we used the model test basin was firstly, obviously, it gives us a controlled environment, um, allowed for same uh, test and environmental factors to be run for every single test we did. And secondly, that it was wide enough that we weren't experiencing any refraction of the waves off the walls um, and then back onto our testing. For the testing, we chose to use two quite different hull types, one being mono hull, second being catamaran, which you can see on the bottom there. Both of these have a similar water line length of 1600 and 1685 respectively. They were both ballasted down to design water line and displacement um, so that we sort of had a similar um, hull types to compare to each other. In the testing, we chose to constrain the values that we weren't interested in. Um, in this case, that was the sway, surge, and yaw, and which would then just left us free to heave and pitch for the catamaran and the monohull. There is also the addition of roll was allowed for the monohull as well. In the yellow highlight boxes, you can see the load cells that we used. Um, these allowed us to record the drag values for each run. Um, the same load cell was used for both models and located obviously on that forward post. We also used highlighted in the green there, some LVDTs or better known as linear variable displacement transducers um, to measure our running trim. 
And the last bit of equipment that we used uh, was this wireless data transfer box, which was a bit of new equipment um, that we were testing out for AMC last year. It just allowed for us to get our data um, basically live and allowed for less um, cables and power to be run along the rig, just making it all a bit simpler. In terms of the testing that we did, you can see in the table there that we tested across the four different ranges. Um, we've got, we did test in subcritical, transcritical, critical, and supercritical. Um, I should also note that I have been referring to as we, um, I did perform this research with two other thesis students uh, last year. So the testing was done. Uh, they were, however, looking into different components, but we used the same model test uh, set up. Important to note here also is that we have a 300 mil water depth that was used across all the tests. And we also did uncertainty checks throughout our testing just to make sure that we weren't getting any errors. The reason that we chose to do tests across all the range, even though the main area of interest that we were interested in is just the transcritical, was wanted to make sure we got a nice even curve and that we could also use that to check against uh, tests that had already been completed in previous years in that subcritical zone and in the supercritical zone. We also also note here that we did do seven tests for the catamaran and 13 for the monohull. The reasoning for this was we sadly just ran out of a bit of time for the catamaran to do another set of uh, runs for it. Um, so mainly the monohull got the majority of the runs. Plot here is one of our drag recording plots. Uh, the reason I show this plot is just so that we can see the change in state across the run um, and also that we can see the drag recordings. Obviously in this plot, you can see we've got the acceleration phase of the run, moving into our settling phase and then eventually into our steady state phase, uh, which is the area of interest. In that steady state phase, you can see the line, which is used as the laser gate. This laser gate helped for us just to determine where the model was along the run in terms of the data. And that also allowed for us to be able to get the same set of data um, across the entire steady state, across all our runs as well. So that was, we used a set of data that was four meters before that laser gate and two meters after that. In here, you can see that light blue color in the background. That was the raw data that we recorded in the drag recording. Um, as you can see, there's a fair bit of noise in that. This led us to basically applying a filter, which we used a Butterworth filter through the MATLAB software of four Hertz. And that allowed us to get out this black line and our drag values. After receiving our drag values and getting them all out, we were able to put them into these equations. Um, these equations obviously taken from the ITTC 1957 ship model correlate correction line procedures. Um, this just allowed us to split total resistance out into its components uh, that we were interested in. Here um, shows the first lot of analysis that was performed. We did an analysis between the deep water data and the finite water uh, data. And the reason we did this was just to show the true effects uh, that was being experienced. In the plots, you can see that we got residual coefficient running up the y-axis. We got length through number running along the x-axis. We've got the mono hull at the top and the catamaran down the bottom there. You can see in these plots that there was a significant increase in residual resistance coefficient uh, for both of the models compared to the deep water. You can also see that we had a very similar peak, or we had the same peak in the mono hull and the catamaran shallow water data, where we did not have that in the deep water data. You can see that the mono hull peaks a bit later, whereas the catamaran peaked around the same as the shallow water data. This, however, we suspect uh, just due to the large speed increments that we used, we expect that it may actually more accurately peak somewhere between 0 0.3 out 8 and 0 
This plot uh, shows a, a comparison of the running trim. Again, this is compared to the deep water data that we had and finite water depth. Again, on the y-axis, we have running trim in degrees, and then we have length through number again. You can see in this plot that there is a significant increase in the running trim in that finite water range, which was expected as when you enter a finite water range, you obviously experience the effects of squat a lot more significantly than when you're in a deeper uh, water range. In here, you can see that there's quite a um, increase. We've got obviously about 4.6 degrees of running trim for the mono hull um, compared to the deep water data, which gets up there but kept um, increasing. We suspect that the deep water data that was used at the, the hull form um, was probably not efficient at high speeds, leading to this lack of peak in that data. In the catamaran, we do get a peak for the deep water data at about 0.51, where that's obviously compared to shallow water data, which peaks earlier, which can be seen in both the mono hull and the catamaran. The mono hull, oh, sorry, the catamaran peaked uh, with a running trim of about 3.6 degrees. Um, So here is breakdown of our resistance uh, using static values. Um, so we took obviously those drag values, got out our equations and then got out our coefficients, uh, which can be seen in the plot. We've got the resistance coefficients on the y-axis there through depth number along the x-axis. Uh, the mono hull is shown using the square plots and the catamaran using the triangles. Both of these coefficients can obviously be added together to understand the total resistance. Um, and we can also see that in this plot, uh, we experienced a similar viscous resistance for both the hull forms. However, there is a significant increase in the residual resistance between the catamaran and the mono hull. The really interesting point here is that we actually peaked at 0.9 through depth number. This peak is earlier than what some of the other research suggests, where it's around 0 0.1, oh sorry, 1, or just slightly before 1. You can also see here that rapid increase as we enter that transcritical zone just after 0 0.8. The resistance greatly goes up before we obviously get over the hump at about 0 0.9. And then as we enter that um, supercritical range, we start to reduce again. So after doing all of the static testing um, and estimating, we realized that we need to look into the dynamic values as well. So using a, a mix of quantitative and qualitative assessments, um, this was using photographs and the LBDTs uh, to measure our dynamic values. The dynamic wetted surface um, area was calculated using photos taken four meters before the laser gate. Um, these photos were then put into 3D modeling software to allow us to model a water line and then therefore our uh, wetted surface areas. Important to note here is there was a couple of key assumptions that we needed to use uh, to do this. Firstly, that there was the same water line on port and starboard and also same water line on both catamaran demi hulls. You can see in the two images there that there was quite a significant increase in the running trim and then therefore quite significant increase or change in the wetted surface area values between those two speeds demonstrated. Using that data that we took in the photos, um, we were able to get out a set of dynamic values. This plot here, allows us to analyze the two together. So obviously that, that straight solid line is the static wetted surface area of both the models. And we also have the plots, the little dots on either side of that. The mono hull is shown at the bottom there and the catamaran is shown up the top. This uh, plot, we did need to non-dimensionalize using through depth number. 
on the x-axis and by dividing the wetted surface area by the length squared on the y-axis. This just allowed us to show the true dynamic change um, in the model when compared to the static values. Both results uh, show that the dynamic wetted surface area fluctuates above and below the static value. The largest difference obviously is in that through in that transcritical zone, uh, which is shown in the middle there. And this was also observed during testing uh, where both hulls created significant bow waves and running trim through the transcritical zone, which is assumed to have contributed to the increase in dynamic values. From this, we did a comparison between the dynamic and static residuary resistance coefficients, which was the main area of interest. You can see here that in this plot that we have residuary resistance again on the y-axis for depth number on the x. You can see here that there's not really a whole heap of change, uh, especially as we enter the through depth zone between the two values. The main area of interest is actually up in that peak zone. You can see that both of the models showed a peak that occurred later than what the static values is, that being of 0 0.96, um, which goes along with what was sort of shown in previous research around that area. It also shows, again, that rapid increase uh, in that uh, transcritical through depth zone of 0 0.8. This peak does compare closer to what we um, found in our running trim angles as well, uh, which I will show you on the next slide. So these are obviously our running trim angles. Um, they're taken from that using the forward and aft LVDTs. Um, you can see here that in this plot, we have a rapid increase after 0 0.8 again, and the transcritical we also have a peak in the running trim uh, for both of the models around 0 0.98, which is closer to what we found in the dynamic values. However, though, this, this peak did not line up with the static values. The mono hull also showed a significantly larger running trim than the catamaran did in this zone. You can see that the mono hull peaked at around 4.65 degrees, uh, where the catamaran peaked at around 3.59 degrees. And lastly, just to sum up, um, just a few summaries. Finite water depth recorded, significantly higher residual resistance than the running trim than deep water. This static resistance comparison showed similar CF for both of the models. However, there was a bigger CR for the mono just due to larger slenderness ratio of the catamaran. The comparison between the static and dynamic resistance was notable and we had a higher trim angle found for the mono hull.